The other thing that we do at Anansi, and we've done since we were founded, is translate uh, French Canadian literature into English. And this is, um, this is an act of great good faith, and it's something that we love doing. And we are constantly trying to figure out how to get English language readers interested in and in reading French Canadian literature. And so we decided, in much the same way that we decided for Astoria, that we just needed to give it its own imprint. And so Arachnid was born. And the first book on our Arachnid list this fall is France Dag's For Sure. I say this fall, but we published it in June. And this is an extraordinary novel. We've been publishing France for a long time, since about 1995, I think. And most of her novels are tiny, slim things. But this is, a, this is not that. This is a nice, big, gorgeous read of a novel. France last year won the Governor General's Award for French literature. And Kelly, in our office, took on the task of getting this novel translated and published within that year, a little over a year. Um, Robert Maisels, the translator, is now himself nominated for a Governor General's Award for the work he's done here. And I'm really thrilled that France is in Toronto and able to join us tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, France Degg. Thank you. Hello. Is this good? Okay. This is really a strange book. <laughs> I worked 10 years on it, and it kept getting stranger, so figure it out. <laughs> so I'm going to read, but I have to sort of shuffle around. It's composed of 1,728 fragments. 12 times 12 times 12. You have it all right there. So I chose some fragments which include the characters of Terry and Carmen, which are a young couple, and their children, uh, Etienne, which is about four or five or six, let's say five. And uh, Marianne, she's not in the book, but she's about almost two, almost two years age. Of age. Now I come from Moncton, I'm French speaking, I'm an Acadian, and in Moncton we have a constant uh, shuffling and war of language going on. A lot of English gets into our French. Unfortunately, a lot of French does not get into the English. That's part of the game. But uh, we've come up with a kind of uh, language which is called Chiac, which is a mixture of old French, new French, because we were the first people in America, the first white people settling in America, although the Quebec people think they're the first, but that's, we, we let them say that. So anyway, I won't go on and on. I'll just start reading and uh, we'll take it from there. Etienne could not understand why his dad was making such a fuss over this particular field of strawberries. On account of they're a whole lot better for your health is why. They don't spray these with chemicals to kill the insects. Why do they want to kill the insects? So that they don't eat the strawberries. Etienne imagined a tiny brown ant trying to eat its way through a big red strawberry and figured it was ridiculous to want to kill the ant since clearly it could, it could never manage it. All those chemicals, they're no good for us. Imagine if Carmen was pouring a cap full of Mr. Clean into the whipped cream for the strawberries. You know, that stuff we use to wash the toilet? But Dad, Mom would never do that. 
course not. I know it. I only mean to say that it's pretty much the same thing when they spray them chemicals on the strawberries. With this year, we'll be eating pure strawberries with a whole pick of, with a whole pile of thick cream on them. Mmm, feels good just thinking about it. Is it still far? No, not so far. New Brunswick has more kilometers of road per inhabitant than any other Canadian provinces. Province, numberless statistic. <laughs> Under a radiant sun, the strawberries literally dropped into their hands while a warm, gentle breeze blew softly over everything and even up into the short sleeves of their t-shirts. Dad, would you be dying if you swallowed a capful of Mr. Clean? Ha, huh, well, it wouldn't be all that good for me, I suppose, but I don't think I died from it. How about two capfuls, then? Not two capfuls, neither, I wouldn't think. Only I'd have a terrible tummy ache for sure, and most likely I'd be throwing up. And a whole glass full? A whole glass? Well, that's not likely to happen, is it? Why would I be swallowing that? I'd like to know. Unless somebody was making me, wanting to poison me or some such thing. Why, you're not thinking of poisoning your dad with Mr. Clean, I hope. Le Petit Etienne protested, laughing. Two, three. The other is as evanescent and elusive as gas, and the writer who has a good appetite and enjoys a hot meal, is constantly lighting the gas. Many writers heat with gas, and some even work by gaslight. Although they are well aware of the dangers, writers will not hesitate to light the gas. Even a struggling writer doesn't need to think about it very much before lighting the gas. In fact, the struggling writer needs gas more than the writer in fine form. That's why neither a psychoanalyst nor a literary master would counsel a writer, even a struggling one, not to light the gas. The psychoanalyst and the master know that gas helps the writer navigate among the letters and phrases. In other words, on the other hand, letters and phrases sketch out the contours of the gas. Books are full of gas. Well, how about Tide then? Would Tide be poisoned too? Holy jeez, Etienne, now you're starting to worry me. But Etienne really wanted to know. Like, Say Granny was to put the tide in her strawberry pie instead of sugar. Would that kill the whole family? Well, I suppose whichever one, one of us took the first bite would right away know the taste was bad and would spit it out or choke on it or some such thing, and then the rest of us would hold off eating it. Then the police would come then the police would come in to figure out what happened, and then most likely Granny'd be hauled off to prison if they could prove that she was weary of all, us, all of us and really wanted to poison the whole family. Etienne had not imagined the story could end in prison. But how come the police know it was Granny? New, we say new. I don't know. Maybe 
the neighbors heard the screaming or something and they dialed 911. Here we go. To put it simply, the real is beyond reach. It's the bottom of a bottomless well. It's the chicken or the egg. It's the only egg we've got, and once dropped, it's break. it breaks. It lies there, a splatter on the floor, impossible to gather up. Such is the real. It escapes us, forces us to speak, to fall back on the symbolic and the imaginary. Someone lays an empty plate before us and says, here, here's your egg. We have no choice but to believe it, to understand and say thank you, which explains why politeness is a virtue. And just as the real is the bottom of a bottomless well, Hence, is a character like the bottom of a bag with a false bottom. <laughs> the strawberry picking was in full swing. Dad, is there a jail for kids? <laughs> Etienne had used the English word jail instead of French Prison. Prison. You're not allowed to say jail. But that's all right. I won't tell your mother. Well, you said end up in prison. I said that. I never even noticed. Terry was playing innocent, but he was conscious that he'd been increasingly lapsing into shiak lately. No. They don't really have prison for kids. If ever a child was to do something terrible wrong, they'd figure it was on account of the parents. Didn't bring up properly. And then they sent the child to a special kind of school where he'd be learning what the parents failed to teach him. Le petit Etienne was playing, paying close attention. Only those schools are a whole lot stricter than the schools we got around here. Most times you have to stay there a couple of years. You sleep there and everything. Thinking, Terry, thinking he would like to be inside Etienne's head to know what the boy was thinking, struggled to say more. Like, let's say you decide to put some of that Tide in the sugar bowl. And I get up one morning not knowing, and I pour a whole lot of it in me Cheerios. So then I end up having to go to the hospital. Most likely, they'll try to figure out why you'd be wanting to hurt me. Could be on account of I don't treat you right. Or maybe there's something inside you that needs to hurt people. Or could be you don't even know the difference between what's right and the wrong. Le Petit Etienne had never imagined that the police made such fine distinctions. Chances are they'll decide it wasn't really your fault on account of it's, an awful rare, it's awful rare that a child by himself is really bad. Almost always, it's other people's that made him the way he is. For a moment, Etienne continued to pick strawberries, seemed satisfied. And if it turned out that I was really bad all by myself inside me, what would happen then? Le Petit Etienne had used the word kiss or what instead of the more colloquial quos or what. What, what. Thereby demonstrating that even he knew how to refine his language in a de delicate situation. Numbers are not merely numbers. That is, arithmetical expressions. 
According to certain ancient traditions, numbers express qualities rather than quantities. Some even claim that numbers are superior to words when it comes to understanding the universe. To those who think that numbers are the product of our intelligence, the ancients argue quite the opposite, suggesting that our intelligence comes from numbers. After all, don't we say it all adds up to mean we have reached a new understanding or knowledge through the addition of a certain kind of a certain number of observations. It occurred to Terry he might have raised a subject that was too harsh for a child's ear. Well, sure, I don't want to put the fear in ya with all this talk. Only if folks was looking further than the end of their nose, they wouldn't be putting so many of them chemicals all over the place. Take this place here. They put zero chemicals, and you see for yourself. The strawberries are right fine, just the same. In those other fields, they's putting seven, seven different chemicals. Do you understand what zero is? I thought of reading just a short excerpt in French, just so you get the feeling of what the language uh, is. So this is about potatoes. Figure it out from there. <laughs> Les patates se vendions bien avant, quand il y avait pas grand chose à manger, puis pas si tant de choix à piquer dedans. À ce tour, c'est plus ça. Le, mange, le monde mange toute façon de stuff à part des patates. Puis là, je te parle pas rien que de ces là qui avons pur d'engraisser là. So pour sûr, faut qu'ils trouvions une autre way de les vendre les patates, comme faire des plus petits sacs plus eye-catching, si tu vois quoi je veux dire. Puis il y a les différentes sortes de patates et tout, parce que c'est comme le vin à stir. le monde commence à connaître ça. Les patates qu'ils voulaient pour faire du râpé ne sont pas les mêmes que celles-là qu'ils voulaient pour la, mouru, la morue bouillie. Puis les patates qu'ils usent pour baker, encore là, au fourneau ou au microwave, là non plus, ils ne voulaient pas les mêmes. Quoi je disais? Ah oui, les patates. Les patates qu'ils usent pour baker, puis celles-là qu'ils voulaient pour faire fricasser, ne sont pas les mêmes que celles-là qu'ils usent pour faire des fries. Merci. <rires> <rires> 